About a year ago, I made a video on some fun Doom mods from the 90s. People seem to like that video, and I figured I'm probably overdue for a sequel anyway, so here it is, 10 more classic Doom mods from the 1990s. Right off the bat, I just want to mention a particular mod, a certain mod that many people asked me about in the last video. Needless to say, this mod was, and still is to some degree, a very popular and revolutionary mod, one that inspired many which came after it. That's right, of course I'm talking about the Aliens Total Conversion. It's a really good wad and deserves love, so go ahead and play it. I never played this one back in the 90s though, so there's probably others out there who are better qualified to talk about it from both a nostalgic and a technical perspective. I just wanted to give it recognition right out of the gate to nip comments asking why I ignored it in the bud. See, this video isn't necessarily going to be about the most zany or fun wads from the 90s, but rather the ones that I actually played back in the late 90s as a kid. Some aren't that great, while others have aged very well, all things considered. The first custom wad I ever had the joy of playing was an old clunker from 1997 called Doomed to Die. It's a compilation wad consisting of various standalone Doom 1 maps converted to Doom 2. As a kid, I had no idea about that, and I really had no idea how large the wad making community already was at that point. I was just a kid after all. All I knew was that I had played Shareware Doom and Doom 2 to death and wanted something new. This old wad marks the first and only time where I was so young that my dad had to help me download and install it. Once he did though, it felt practically like I had discovered Doom 3. No, not that Doom 3, that one was still a few years away. These days, this wad is probably pretty unremarkable to most players. The maps, while not bad, are very basic and often kind of bland and there's even multiple maps later on where soft locks are possible due to completing things in the wrong order. As a child, none of that mattered to me. All I knew was that I had a whole new campaign of custom maps to play through, with heavy use of cheats of course, that looked approximately as good as Doom 1 and Doom 2 themselves to the untrained eye. I'll forever have a strong affinity for this wad, not only for wowing me with simple things like a custom title screen and a handful of custom sounds and midis, but because throughout the wad, you can find some genuinely cool and inspiring set pieces and encounters. If you've ever wondered what the average map from the 90s was like, this wad has 32 prime examples, all of varying quality. But hey, it was the 90s, man. The tools they had back then were crappy, so basic mapping was a lot more forgivable. Even then, the clunky tools of the time didn't prevent the authors of the next few wads from making fantastic creations. Doom City is a pretty well-known old-school map, and there's a good reason for that. Even though there's only about 10 minutes of gameplay to be had here, it was so uncommon to see a wad with this many custom textures, and ones that actually looked good, no less. Additionally, it was rare to see a somewhat convincing town map for Doom back in this era, so it scored plenty of novelty points among wad players of the era. The custom sky texture and custom midi really helped to set the mood and make this little wad feel like its own thing. All this custom content was made by Seamus Young. For one man to do all this with the primitive tools we had back in 1995 is a very commendable effort. People who started their custom Doom playing adventures with map sets like Back to Saturn X and Ancient Aliens and mods like Brutal Doom and Complex Doom probably won't get why I'm gushing so hard over this bite-sized 10 minute map from yesteryear. But let me tell you, coming across this back in the day felt like finding a random $10 bill on the ground. One of those unexpected little treats. As a side note, I will say that having started out with Doom to Die, I had the unreasonable expectation ingrained into me that every custom wad would be at least a whole episode, and preferably a whole 32 map campaign. I do remember feeling disappointed when Map 02 was just underhauls, but I'm glad it was this lovable wad to bring my expectations back into line. 1997's Area 51 is campy Doom fun personified. The two maps the SWAT consists of are fun adventures through, you guessed it, the hidden Area 51 compound. Here you'll find some cool custom enemy sprites, custom sounds out to here, and two very enjoyable 90s MIDI files. I'll never forget the mix of fear and excitement I felt when I was a youngster when I first booted this SWAT up and saw the compound full of baddies accompanied by the Mission Impossible music. It really felt like I was a spy or a super soldier or something like that, busting my way into a top secret hidden facility to put an end to some nebulous wrongdoing by the UAC or the government or whoever the heck was up to no good this time around. 
This is one of those wads that I think will still be enjoyable even for newer doomers with more refined sensibilities. There's the camp factor and some roughness around the edges, but the creators who built this wad put in the hard yards to really ensure that it has its own identity and sense of purpose. Seeing all the dismantled experimental spider mastermind parts laying around almost makes it feel like you have a chance to stop these assholes before they complete their army of mutant super soldiers. If you play just one wad from this list, it really should be this one. Hellrun is an absolute beast of a map. Even today, I'm sure some players will struggle with this one. When I first loaded this big sucker up, I was floored by the sheer size of it and seemingly endless monster count. There are so many different approaches you can take to conquering this level. Remember, I had only played a handful of custom wads at this point, and I was still single digit age, so maybe I was too easily impressed, but there was no alien vendetta yet, and by sheer happenstance I'd never come across wads like Memento Mori. It was only when I started mingling with the community in the early 2000s that I found such wads. For a few years, this wad held the record of the largest Doom map I had ever seen. Even today, I think players will be able to look past the sound of D run-in filling their ear holes and enjoy this beast. To people who are spoiled by all the easily accessible Doom content we have now, it may just feel like a stock standard map you'd find in the later half of a megawad, but this proto slaughter arena still has some tricks up its sleeve that will likely fool even the more seasoned Doom veterans out there. I played this wad when it was brand spanking new back in the day. I'm not sure how exactly I found it, although it was surely on a GeoCities page or something similar, though unfortunately I haven't been able to find it when searching around for old Doom websites. This is another cool old school wad that most have probably never heard of. You start out in the remains of a crash plane, which looks really cool and convincing for a 90s wad. The corpse of your dead friend is nearby, but even in death, your buddy helps you with a key card, which grants you access to a small handful of supplies locked in the back of the plane, which you will definitely need. The aggressively bright red sky with its gigantic sun paired with the angry, droning sound of the man in the box midi absolutely sets the tone for this level. It's aggressive and outright mean at times, but it's definitely worth the price of admission. A little diversion here, but I'm 99% sure this is the wad that first introduced me to Alice in Chains. I know that Doom 2 technically does have a couple Alice in Chains midis inside, but this was just like a brick wall in auditory midi format, and I really liked that about it. When I finally heard the real Man in the Box on the radio a few years later, my jaw dropped and I finally sought out the album Facelift, which was an important milestone in discovering what kind of music really appeals to me. Anyway, this is a good map and a pretty long one. If you want to kill half an hour or so, this map is a great way to do just that. It's a bit stingy at times, so make sure every shell counts. Attack, also known as Deep Attack, is garish but lovable 90s modding personified. So many elements come together to make this deliciously discordant wad. You've got textures ripped straight from Heretic and Hexen, animated lightning barrier thingies, and just all kinds of craziness coming together here. There's a so unfitting it becomes fitting midi of what is love playing in the background, and it really is just the cherry on the sundae with this one. Truth be told, modern doomers might find this one a little too rough to really appreciate, but I still have a lot of love for this old beast. It taught me that some slightly disjointed elements can still come together to make a really fun experience. Looking back, it's clear that this was basically just a test map by Jack Vermeulen to first and foremost demonstrate the power of Deep, his editor, which would later become Deep Sea. Personally, I never really got into Deep Sea. Watt author and a few years later the first Doom Builder were much more my speed, but I always appreciated this wad and Deep Sea as a tool regardless. This is a time capsule above all else, but for those who love this sort of thing, why not take a dip in and see how it feels? Personally, it's a rush of nostalgia when I occasionally get the urge to boot this old sucker up, and the compelling gameplay makes it worth your while. Even though I didn't discover online Doom Deathmatch until 2001, I ended up with a decent handful of Deathmatch wads in my collection during the late 90s. Despite only some of these maps having monsters, and clearly being designed for multiplayer, I still had fun wandering these old halls as a kid. One of those wads was Dwango 5, one of the most classic Deathmatch megawads in existence, which really needs no introduction. 
This is the wad that got me into Nine Inch Nails, in a similar way to how Bermuda and Doom 2 itself got me into Alice in Chains. Luckily for my young self, in Dwango 5, about half the maps were populated with enemies, so I always had a good time with this wad even before I had ever used its levels for deathmatch. Another is a little known wad called JFL 18, which consists of 18 maps which really would fit in well with any of the other Dwango wads. Most of them look okay for deathmatch, but they also have enemies so there's some fun for single player as well. All the maps seem to either be entryway themed or at the very least episode 1 of Doom 2 themed. I actually lost this wad for years and I couldn't find it for the longest time. I even went so far as to recreate segments of the map that stuck out in my mind in hopes of finding it. Years later, when I was messing with some old school Doom sites, I finally found it again on Doom2.net. A more unique wad I had as a kid was an entryway clone called Drop Dead, which also uses the same Man in the Box MIDI as Bermuda Triangle. I can't actually remember which of these two wads I found first, but either way the MIDI is a welcome addition in both cases. Entryway clones for Deathmatch are a dime a dozen, but this entryway clone distinguished itself by being full to the brim with custom sounds, most of which are pretty annoying but they're still entertaining. And even aside from that, the walls are covered in various band logos, and the map has a genuinely badass texture outside which shows a marine caught up in a mastermind's web. I loved this little map back in the day. It creeped me out when I was young, and it's just plain cool. The last of the deathmatch wads I had as a kid is a gorgeous set based on Eternal Doom, called, unsurprisingly, Eternal Deathmatch Set. This is another wad that I lost years ago, but I remembered it very clearly and fondly, Every now and then, I would occasionally make posts asking people about it on Doomworld, and just a few months ago, Doomworld user Andromeda pointed me in the right direction. It really is satisfying finding old wads you enjoyed once again years later. The wad itself is very nice on the eyes, and unsurprisingly looks a lot like Eternal Doom, which in turn takes several pages from Heretic on the visual front. I don't think deathmatch gameplay would be all that phenomenal here, simply because the maps are a little too large and sprawling, but even just thematically, these maps are sure to impress. I certainly enjoyed wandering around in them in my formative years, even despite the lack of opposition. Before ending this video, I will mention that there still is one mod from my childhood that I've yet to find. All I remember about it is that the starting view was very similar to this recreation that I put together a few years ago. It had several instances of 64 wide hallways with pipe wall textures and revenants. I know that's not much to go by, but if anyone does end up finding a wad that meets this description, I sure would love to see it since it might be my last personal childhood wad mystery wrapped up. Anyway, that about does it for this video. I hope you got some entertainment out of it, and maybe some of you can share with us your favorite wads that left the biggest impression on you. I also want to give a quick thank you to the handful of people who have put money in my PayPal tip jar. You guys really are a huge help. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching, take care, and we'll see you around here again soon.